Um, uh, what's the lady's name? Phyllis K. Raymond's here. It's silly. Philly Philly's here. <laughs> Haven't seen Brother Mike yet, but I'm sure he's close by. He might be sleeping already. Tonight, <laughs> Poor guy. tonight is going to be another one of those great nights. Because, guys, what we've come to now, we've had probably one of the most serious, serious discipleship processes of anybody I've ever seen in the last one year. March the 22nd will be one year we're here. What's wow. next? What's next is God using us everywhere. Everywhere. Mikey, Mikey. Amen. Wait, wait a minute now. Wait a minute. Uh, I know you wrote Mike, Mikey, Mike, but I've always seen it as this. Oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah. Amen, Shannon. You know, he said Mikey, Mike. I always saw it as Mike E. Mike, <laughs> so, so it's the classic example of um, what you see and what I see. See, I always saw Mike E. Mike. <laughs> I know it's like Mike was in the shower, taking a shower, and where's brother Mike? <laughs> He's totally dried up. He's eating a, eating a burrito, you know. And Shannon's like, wow, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's some powerful stuff going on. He was on. translated. <laughs> Just like Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Bless you, brother. I, you know, I know you're, I know you're busy. you got a busy deal. So we thank you for being here and being a part of this with us. Thank you for helping us do everything we've done. You're a wonderful friend and brother. And we thank you. YouTube is up. We got a couple folks over there already. Uh, Facebook is up. And um, the sun is still up. How many of you are getting used to this extra hour of daylight? If you could just see Leanne's face, she squinted. Now, the glory. It's the glory. A little earlier tonight. We had um, eating fudge. Oh, Ooh, hallelujah. Yum. Wait, is it Mackinac Island fudge? Oh, that sounds really good. <sighs> eating fudge the rest is <laughs> How many, by the raising of hands, feel that Mike should share his fudge with us? <laughs> and take us to Perkyo's. Hallelujah. Brother Al, uh, what happened in Texas today, brother? You go fishing or anything? Brother Al's a fisherman. He's a fisherman and a mechanic. Now, oh, I know what I started to say. Hey, Wilma Tony's here. Wilma Tony is here. Now, Velma's here. It's a tourist trap in PG rated. <laughs> Now, uh, a little earlier tonight, we had some communication with Sister Gwen and Brother Dave, and they took off for the UP, the UP, and are looking for um, the Northern Lights tonight. So there might be some good Northern Lights if you can get away from all the the light noise in your area. If you're in the Northern Rim of the United States. Uh, Get out on a tall hill where there's no lights and see if you can see them because it's a beautiful sight if you actually get to. I know as a kid, seemed like when we were kids, we got to see them a lot right over top of our house, but that might just have been because we're so holy. But there wasn't any lights there, so you could see it really good right across the Milky Way. But, you know, uh, just wanted to give you that heads up and... Uh, after we celebrate God, after we study some awesome word of God and um, phew, drink some coffee, eat some fudge, hang out with y'all, shout glory be to God. And, you know, 
what do we get to do? You can either go to sleep or you can go Northern Light watching. I think when we're done tonight, it's Northern Light watching. Yeah. Hopefully... Sister Gwen's on top of a tall pine tree up there somewhere where she's got enough signal to send us a message. She might be up on the top of the bridge. She's <laughs> See her and Dave swinging from the... Her and Dave are swinging from that, that top cables. deck up there on the cables on the Mackinac Bridge. You know, I can see him. I can see him. <laughs> hey, it's cool to have somebody that knows what this stuff's all about that's yeah. a part of our life. Hallelujah. Yeah, because she told you about that really cool app. Oh, yeah. App. Oh, yeah. She told me about a really cool app. And I I use it all the time. And anyways, it is now 20 after we've talked about fudge, Mike being sucked out of the shower. And um, we've <laughs> talked about how beautiful the weather is. Wait, we did talk about Shannon talking to a widow. Yeah. Now, now here's the thing. I'm... I'm going to tell you about that. God is talking to all of us. The question are, the question are, geez. the questionnaire, <clears throat> the question is, are we listening? And say it with me. I'm listening more today than I have ever listened in my life. Really am. Really, really, really. <clears throat> really am. And we're walking with God in all we do. Well, we always start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Peanut butter fudge. Mike, I was just getting yeah. ready to go. And now you're going to talk about peanut butter fudge? I don't even think they sell fudge in this city. I haven't seen any now that you mentioned that. Huh. We have just now started a fudge company. <laughs> and there's no maple syrup here, so send a semi. Well, there is maple because syrup there's no maple trees here. It's like $75 a pint. <laughs> You thought your gas was expensive? Wait till you pay $18 for a quart of maple in this place. All right. It is now 22 minutes after. All right. We're ready to roll. Are we ready to rock and roll? All right. Here we go. We're going to rise, say the Pledge of Allegiance. Have a moment of silence like we always do, sing God Bless America. We're going to get right into the Word of God for tonight. Oh, it is. It's one of the best flavors. 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 <laughs> You'll be teaching in tongues tonight. I will be teaching in tongues. Get your, get your interpretations going very strongly, all right? And, uh. I'm like all the rest of you. You can hear all them people out running around, having a blast. Motorcycles and big trucks are outside the window. The window's open right now. So we're going to preach to the whole apartment complex here in a few minutes. We did it all last summer. Remember how we did that? We preached all last summer, too. We did. Maple butter, peanut butter fudge. Woo! Yum, yum, yum. Now, shall we rise together? Render your honor. Let's make our Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States and to the republic for which it stands. One nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and for all. And now, we'll have a moment of silence as we remember those who are missing in action and those who have given that life. It's in honor of every veteran who may be wounded in their spirit, in their soul, and in their body. 
It's in honor of those who have faithfully served and now today are great citizen in our communities. And it's in honor of all the families of the fallen and the wounded and those who are serving who stand beside them every day. This moment of silence will last for 21 of the 21 rifle volleys fired at the funeral of soldier. This moment of silence begins now. Now, join with us in singing, even if from the depths of your heart, America. God bless the land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountain to the ocean, oh, God bless America, my home sweet home, God bless America. My home, sweet home. And now we'll pray for the United States of America. Thank you, Father. That on this night, right here tonight, every prayer we've ever prayed is brought to a multiplication factor, an exponential factor, and added to once again. Thank you that the effectual, fervent prayer of the righteous. And we are the righteous. Avails much. Thank you. You said to ask. And it will be given. Seek. And we'll find. Knock. And the door. Will. Be open. Thank you father that. You gave us Jesus. Who before the foundations of the world set and established the fact that he would be the price that would be paid for our salvation, our redemption, our reconciliation. He would be the propitiation of our sin. And he would give us his righteousness and make us the righteousness of God. Oh, Jesus, we thank you. Thank you that at that moment when we received you as our Lord and Savior, you transferred everything of you inside of us. You gave us this glorious kingdom. We thank you for it in the name of Jesus. Ministers of reconciliation. You made us ambassadors of the kingdom of heaven. You made us heirs of God and join heirs with Jesus and all of the kingdom is ours. And you said you put it on the inside of us. Whoa, hallelujah. And you made us kings and priests unto our God. And now, Lord, you've given us one of the most amazing processes. To come to the understanding of everything that's ours and everything we walk in. And tonight... We put all of that faith, all of that energy, all of that dominion and power, all of that family, all 
of the force of heaven now into these prayers. And we say tonight, God bless America. God bless America. God bless America. Thank you, Jesus, that you are the head of the church right now today. We are your body and we are walking in the paths of righteousness for your name's sake. You told us to speak unity. We speak unity. Everybody say it. We are united. We are the United States of America. We are united. Psalm 133.3 declares how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It's like that holy anointing oil that flowed down the beard of Aaron down onto the ground. And that dew of Hermon. The place of the commanded blessing of God. Oh, we thank you for that commanded blessing. Whew. Say that right out loud. I receive the commanded blessing of God. Wow. I, he just washed me like. Whoosh, whoosh. We receive it. We declare it. We take it with us everywhere we go. We say there's unity in the church. We say there's unity amongst pastors. We say there's unities among the among the, the uh, sheep, the body of Christ, that we function together and we are connected by that which every joint supplies. Oh, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, that tonight every one of these beautiful people have brought their supply with them. And they're adding to the body. And we're building muscle. And we're building strength. And we're building sinew. And we're building everything we need for a strong body. Oh, we give you glory for it. We give you glory. In the name of Jesus. You told us to pray that all the branches of the government would function like the founders designed them according to Isaiah. You, Lord, are our lawgiver the legislative department. You are our judge, the Supreme Court, the judicial branch. You are our king, the executive branch of the government. And we declare right now that every bit of this, I'm going to open my eyes, all of this corruption goes away. Command it with me. Say corruption leave now. Corruption leave now. And the blessing of the Lord come to our street. In our, in our mighty name, <laughs> in the mighty name of our Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus. Number three, we say good politicians stay good. Father, deliver them from foolish and ignorant men because not all men have faith. Deliver them today, we pray. May every good politician that goes to the to Washington, D.C. to make a difference. May they make a difference now. May every good one say, tear down this fence. Open up our halls of government to the American people now. <laughs> In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We've asked you for good politicians, Lord. We believe you've sent them there, and we command that every wicked one be removed. Amen. You said it in the prophecy through Brother Copeland that they would be removed, and their light would be removed, and the candle from history, and we speak it boldly now. In the name of Jesus, according to uh, Psalm 124, 121, verse 4, he who keeps us never slumbers. You never sleep. You're working night and day watching over this great nation. You're met, you are destroying the meetings of the wicked who are trying to overthrow this nation and our government. In the name of Jesus, say this out loud with me. Every ism we bind you now. We bind the ism, communism, socialism, feminism, modernism. We bind you racism. We bind you in the mighty name of Jesus. We bind you violence. You will not be in our street. And we give the glory and the honor 
and the praise unto Jesus. Now say it with me. We lose liberty and justice for all. If you bind something, you got to lose something. So we lose liberty and justice for all right now. And now, Father, as we do on a regular basis, we declare over our great defenders, the Army, the Navy. Wait, we always say the Army first. The Navy, the Army, the Marines, the Air Force, and the Coast Guard. The Secret Service, the CIA, the FBI are special forces. We speak over the police, the fire, the emergency workers, our National Guard. We speak over all of our volunteers and every volunteer ministry that goes to wherever there's been a disaster. We declare the blessing of the Lord in their lives and no corruption in it. Just, just peacemakers being peacemakers and causing peace to come to this nation. Say it with me. May righteous people, May righteous people. lead our peacemaking organization. Yes, lead our peacemaking organization. In the we pray. Now, we're going to pray the Patriot Prayer. This prayer has been adapted from the Great Gettysburg Address by Abraham Lincoln. It's not word for word. We made it so we can say it in a prayer. God gave this to me years ago, and it's as good today as it's ever been. Pray this with me. Say it right out loud. Say it with some bold faith. Father, help us the living to be dedicated to the unfinished work which these fought for and so nobly advanced. Help us to be dedicated to the great task remaining before us that from these honored fallen, we take increased devotion to the cause for which they gave that last full measure of devotion. And we highly resolve that these shall not have fallen in vain and that this nation under God experiences a new birth of freedom right here, right now, today. And this government of the people, by the people, for the people shall not perish from this earth. Long may our land be bright with freedom's holy light. Protect us, Lord, by thy great might, great God, our King. Forgive us of our sin, Lord, and heal our land. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. I want to change long may our land be bright to long will. Put that in the hands of the great changer of all documents here. I know the uh, old patriotic song says May, but um, it's March, so we might as well say Will. If you, don't worry. You really got to really, you got to have been around here a while to catch that one. Psalm 144. Psalm 144 is going to be the closing of our prayer. For, for the United States of America. Grab your Bible and let's read it out loud together. You ready? Psalm 144, verse, we're going to read the whole chapter. Get your Bible out. I know, I know, I know you got a phone, but I mean, come on, get a Bible. Get a Bible, get some pages. Get something you can feel and hold. I think, I think the glory of God comes off these pages on this. Mm -hmm. I agree. In the mighty name of Jesus. Here we go. Psalm 144, verse number one. Blessed be the Lord, my rock, who trains my hands for war. 
and my fingers for battle. My loving kindness and my fortress. Speak it right out loud. My high tower and my deliverer. My shield and the one in whom I take refuge. Who subdues my enemy under me. I know mine says uh, people, but really it's the enemies under me. Three, Lord, what is man that you take knowledge of him? Or the son of man that you are mindful of him? Man is like a breath. His days are like a passing shadow. Verse number five. Bow down your heavens, O Lord, and come down. Touch the mountains, and they shall smoke. Don't you want to see that? God show up. Well, I, I keep telling you, we're seeing him on the mountain going, I'm coming quickly. I've been seeing him again right now tonight while we're praying. Hallelujah. Six, flash forth lightning and scatter them. Shoot out your arrows and destroy them. Now, God's not going to do that to his children. He's doing that to his enemies. David didn't make it real plain here that he was changing his speech to talk about the enemies. But he said it in the first verse. Seven, stretch out your hand from above. Rescue me and deliver me out of great waters for the hand of foreigners whose mouths speak lying words and whose right hand is a right hand of falsehood. I will sing a new song to you, O God. On a harp of ten strings, I will sing praises to you. The one who gives salvation to kings, who delivers David, his servant, from the deadly sword. Rescue me and deliver me from the hand of foreigners whose mouths speak lying words and whose right hand is a right hand of falsehood. Twelve, that our sons may be as plants grown up in their youth, that our daughters may be as sculptured in palace style, that our barns may be filled with plenty, supplying all kinds of produce, that our sheep may bear forth thousands and ten thousands in the field, that our truck drivers and semis may be well laden. Wait, that's what the oxen was, the transportation department. All right. That there be no breaking in or going out. That there be no outcry or violence in our street. Amen. Happy are the people who are in such a state. Happy are the people whose God is the Lord. Somebody say it. Amen. And so be it. You might say, Pastor. I've never seen that one before. Well, I encourage you to get it out and read it in every day. Why? Because that is David praying for his folks, his people, God's people, and for the enemy to be diffused at every corner where he tries to stand up. In Jesus' mighty name, we speak it done right now. In the name of Jesus. Now, I have at least three to four times the amount of speed that I need to broadcast to you. So everybody make this declaration of faith with me right now. I declare in Jesus' mighty name, according to the word of God, as children of the kingdom, we are fruitful, multiply, take dominion. We are fruitful, multiply, take dominion. 
by intention and, and subdue these airwaves. And subdue these airwaves. And we command this signal is perfect tonight. And we command this signal to be perfect tonight. And every night. And every night. And every all the way from my computer. All the way from your computer. To your device. To my device. In the mighty name of Jesus. For anyone who wants to connect, say it, ready? We're not done. And no weapon. And no weapon. And no evil person. And no evil person. Can stand against the power of God. Can stand against the power of God. And when they do, the violence of Almighty God and His wrath is poured out upon them. Is poured out upon them. In Jesus' mighty name. Now, you might be saying, Pastor, that sounds pretty mean and pretty angry. No, no, it's not mean at all. It very much is saying, stop, stop messing with our stream Amen. and leave us alone. We ain't doing nothing bad to nobody. And so leave us alone. This is an app that is supposed to work for anybody anywhere on the earth. And so. It works for you and me. I have more than enough speed. Upload and download. My computer's in great shape. I got all the programs I need. And I declare, and you declare, that this signal gets to everyone who needs it right now tonight. In the mighty Amen. name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now, Sister Phyllis Raymond has been welcoming some folks. Edgar Ganey, Dylan Thor Walker. I like all these names. Yeah. Captain Bryce Evers, John and Angela Dominique. All right. Brady Walker, Monique, Prophet Dida Uvila. Oh, Jesus, help me. Monica Lynch, we welcome you to be a part of our program. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 <coughs> so welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I want you to know that every day you should be speaking over the United States of America. Do not feel like you have to sit back and wait for me to say it. Grab these verses we say. Grab these five points we just put out. Grab the prayer, the patriotic prayer. You start speaking it in your city, in your community, in your county. Get Psalm 144 out and just drive around in the county and read it. Yeah, there you go. And diffuse the enemy in your community. Yeah. You do it. Because when you do, you're going to be empowered and um, deputized under the name here of the community of faith. Now, don't get out of your car and throw Bibles at people or something stupid. Yeah. <laughs> if you're going to use our name, please use just a little bit of wisdom, maybe a whole lot in the mighty name of Jesus. But come on, God has empowered you. It's like Shannon said earlier, she went and found a widow because God said there was somebody at the mall who was going to need her. And she went and did it. <laughs> it's so awesome. Now wait. You and I have that same assignment every day in, in the community. Whether or not you go to the mall, whether or not you meet a widow. For all you men, don't go find widows in the mall. That is not going to be good for anybody. <laughs> it's like Dr. Barkley says about the elders and the deacons of the church. Not all deacon, not all widows are old. Some of them are young and pretty and sexy. You don't need a young man out chasing young widows. Amen. Lord Jesus, help me get off this real quick. It was a great day today. Had a chance to pray over two fine law enforcement wow. officers during doing their job. It was a great experience. And my heart was full. Oh, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Now, listen, let me say something about Robert. Robert is not going to be as cautious as what some people is because he's a military guy. And so military and, and law enforcement, they're almost, they're on the same page. 
They're peacemakers. So he's got the opportunity to walk up to a police officer and say, man, I pray for you. And I've done it many times myself. Uh, however, I will say this to you. If you see some officers standing, there's a piece of wisdom you should use. Don't just go charging up there. Walk up respectfully so they don't think you're rushing them. Because <laughs> you don't want to have to say, I just want to pray for you, officer. I just want to pray for you. <laughs> On the ground, sir. I just want to pray. I don't care what you want to do on the ground, sir. No. Come on, Robert. What a powerful statement. What a powerful statement. And, guys, depending on what city you're in, some, some officers are really gun-shy people just walking up to them. I've had it happen before. I've had an oh, officer yeah. look at me and say, pause, please. He just put his hand up. Pause. And I just stop. I said, what do you want? I said, I just wanted to shake your hand and say, thank you for serving. He goes, well, I'll receive your thank you, but I ain't shaking your hand. He said it to me. I ain't shaking your hand. Well, you don't know what the man had been facing. Yeah, yeah. But see, look at there. Look at Robert. Prayed and blessed those men. <laughs> wow. Come on. This is what it's all about. This is what it's all about. If you see an officer at the gas station filling up his patrol car, just stand close and say, Hey, thank you for your service. Yeah. And the day that we live, they need that. They do. They, they do. need that. They really do. Come on, man. Come on, Robert. Come on, man. That's it. <laughs> wait, 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 Mike. I think you just hit something. Some people. Their brain is in the way why they can't pray in the Holy Ghost. So what we got to do is get a taser. I'll bet you pray in tongues now. <laughs> I speak the wisdom of God. <laughs> what? Wait, we are holy, we are righteous, and we do know how to have some fun around here. And I have no idea if Mike's got a taser. I can tell you I don't, okay? Would you like to see it in action? Ah, <laughs> 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 uh, that's awesome. That's Oh, All right. Wow. We're praying for Ashley right now. Father, in the name of Jesus. We don't know Ashley. We don't know her. But Al does. She's of his womb, of his of his loins, as the scripture would say. His lineage. And she's going to Great Lakes for the for boot camp. Whatever you call it. Boat camp. I don't know what you call it. Something. It's Navy. In the name of Jesus, we declare she does well. Amen. That she excels while she's there. That she finds her place, her link in this big chain. Amen. And she fulfills that duty with great excellence. And her heart is, is able to just pour it in there. And her family stands with her. We call it done. May this unit be blessed because Ashley's there. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And Lord, when they throw her over the edge of the ship so she learned to swim, may she swim quickly. Okay, that's probably not what happens, but I was praying for it. In the mighty name of Jesus, may she find her place in this tour of duty that she signed up for. And we thank you for it. Thank you for Brother Al. Thank you that... Al's going to stick with us and give us updates regularly about Amen. it in the mighty name of Jesus. Matter of fact, we say it right now over all the recruits, wherever they are, in the Army, in the Navy, in the Air Force, the Marines, the Coast Guard. We speak it right now over the special forces. They're not recruits, but they're in some rigorous training wherever they may be. And we declare that we raise the greatest, the greatest group the greatest military filled with warriors 
that we've seen in years right here, right now, today. In the mighty name of Jesus. And may the government give them the money they need. And may they always get paid. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Brother Robert, you can add a prayer in there too. Seeing how you're a Navy man. We bless you, man. We're, we're fired up about this. Look at what God's doing right here today. I got a good word to preach, but um, I'll tell you what. I, uh, <clears throat> I don't have to do all the preaching here. You jump off a 20-foot tower into a pool. Oh, wow, Jesus. Wow, really? Oh, and it is called Boot. Oh, Jesus. Okay. All right. Brother Mike says, back away, back away quickly before Leanne gives you the look. <laughs> <laughs> doing the tease. He doesn't know I got one. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Glad to have you. Rebecca Smith, it's good to have you with us. Anybody else I missed while we were praying? I call you blessed in Jesus' mighty name. If you're wondering what all this is, this is what it is. Just exactly what you see. We get together. We pray for America. We pray for each other. We speak the word of God. We grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior. And we wake up in the morning and go make it happen. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now. I uh, I still haven't seen Mary Pastor it. Mary, Somebody I don't know. I don't know where you are, but we love you and we miss you, and we declare God's blessing in your life and whatever's going on. Because I keep thinking about you the last couple of days to the point where I actually mention your name, and so I declare <laughs> the blessing of the Lord is with you, in Jesus' mighty name, in Jesus' mighty name. <clears throat> in Jesus mighty name now let's see where are we at father it is 756 let's just pause for a minute and pray in the Holy Ghost together I gotta get my 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 thoughts focused you guys got me on tasers and I'm I gotta get off tasers I gotta get back into the the presence of God here because I'm the guy that like cop show because I can say run run Psst. Let's just pray together in the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Father, in the name of Jesus, we glorify your name right here, right now. We pause for this moment to focus our hearts, our minds, our spirit on your word and what you want to do tonight right here amongst all these people. And according to Jude, you said, beloved, building up yourself. And your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Shumbanda la sifalaka. O prasandiva lomana. Anda basandika la shadevudima. Enda masaka lirata. Umba sabadiva la sataka. Enda shunde gadabule da savana. Ambrosipa. Avala sitiku. In a nation day, ando le masadaba, ando le sorima, kade bosta valana, and dosha, kamanadive, and de lambadi sutica, ha ha ha, rasamba, avalasi, omana nakata, one sapalide, and disha, ankandavalavada. We build up ourselves in our own most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Spirit, speaking the hidden wisdom of God. Ombra samba diva letama, amba shokalana mundeva, amana sibala, and a shoke, amba davala, ando dosamandike, ambra sepalude, a desha di bolica, endo rala samana, amba la sibada, umbe de shi, ombra nikiribasa. Oh, we give you glory, and we give you honor, and we give you praise right here, right now, in the name of Jesus. You, Lord, are worthy. You are worthy. 
All the glory and all the honor and all the praise goes to your name because of your righteousness and your holiness and the wonder of your grace that fills our life and the faith that you put on the inside of us. Oh, we give you glory. You might say, Pastor, I don't pray in the Holy Spirit like you. Now's the time to start right now. Sunday la mode kabala. Om bada se and then ebana. Om bada sikata. Om bra sabada bodi vondima. Andola shikata. And de ba. And abola sudima. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus we pray. In the mighty name of Jesus we pray. You know, uh, Way back at the beginning of the community of faith, I had a friend who came, a local guy who came and was a part of the program. And, uh, you know, he, he came for one program and he called me as soon as it was over. He said, uh, brother, we had driven truck together at a company here. He goes, uh, brother, I got a question for you. I'm like, yeah, what's that? He goes, did you really just start praying in tongues just like that? I said, well, what do you mean? He goes, well, it sounded like you just, just like all of a sudden just started praying in tongues. I said, well, I did. He goes, you just, just like that, you started praying in tongues. I'm like, well, yeah, what else do you think you do? He goes, well, I don't know. He goes, I grew up a Baptist, and we didn't do that where I went to church. <laughs> I said, brother. It's called building up yourself in your most holy faith. Wait, if there's a prayer, you can pray to build yourself up in your most holy faith. Guess what you better do? You better figure out how to pray that prayer. That's in Jude verse 20. So make sure we get that in there into the comments tonight, the notes. Because it's one of the most important things you'll learn about praying in the spirit is it's the best way to build yourself up in your most holy faith. And you know what? When you do, answers come. Say it with me. Answers come. Answers come. Answers come. And victory comes. And peace comes. Amen. And strength comes. And joy comes. Why? Because... You're building up yourself. Your spirit, man, is being filled with faith. <clears throat> and faith is the victory that overcomes this world. Faith is what makes your spirit, man, strong in every part of your life. In Jesus' mighty name. Now, Brother, Brother Robert prayed, Dear Heavenly Father, bless Ashley in her journey to serve her country. Sign that dotted line and that blank check. Keep her safe. Give her the wisdom, knowledge, and power to never give up <clears throat> and never back down. Amen. In your holy name, I pray. Amen and amen and amen. And Brother Al, that's from a Navy man. I can't tell you what he did in the Navy because I don't want to get hurt. I don't want to <laughs> disappear tonight. Hallelujah. You ready? He was on a ship where there was water. You know, his boat might have been docked. <laughs> his, boat, his boat was docked. They were working on it the whole time he was in the military. In the mighty name of Jesus. Well, I was just praying there for a minute, seeking the will of God, just about what to do next. Because I'm really serious about this word. 
We got into it last night. We're going to finish it up tonight. <clears throat> well, who knows whether we finish it up or not. What you learn when you get around here with us is that God gives us a subject, a topic, a discipleship process, and then he, um, we go, and then we go, and then we go, and then we go, and then we go, and we just stay there, and we just wring it out, and we saturate it and wring it out, and we stretch it out, and we, sh we, we just go until he moves us to the next one. Why? It's called discipleship. It's called building the inside of you, adding to your faith, adding to your faith, adding to your faith. And throughout this last year, we've had some amazing times happen like this. We'll talk about them as we get going here for the birthday party. Make sure you're here. We want you to be here. It's going to be on Facebook. It's going to be on YouTube. It's going to be on blog talk radio. And then we'll see about where else it can be because goodness sakes alive. There's so much information there. It takes about 10 of us to devour it all and figure out what's there and then begin to apply it in what we do. Just because you see it there doesn't mean we can make it work here, but we sure are trying. I got another one I'm working on right now. And I know these guys that put it together. I know some of these guys personally. So maybe this is a good one for us. I know this. There's some really good guys. And um, um, the one man who's a part of making this work um, is actually a friend of mine, actually a, a personal friend. And so um, thank God Sister Gwen was looking. And we're glad to have you be a part of that with us. So I'm going to get to the word of God. We'll receive communion when we're finished. Grab your Bibles. And let's turn tonight to Hold on, let me grab the verse here. Where'd it go? There is Colossians chapter 3, verse 10. Colossians chapter 3, verse number 10. Tonight's topic is grow in grace knowledge in your relationship with the Father, of being one with him. Let me see how I got that said. Add to your faith being one with the Father. Add to your faith being one with the Father. Colossians chapter 3, verse number 10. When you get there, hold your Bible up. Let's make our confession tonight. This is is my, Bible. is my Bible. I believe what it says. I believe what it says. I am what it says I am. I am what it says I am. I go do what it tells me to do. I go do what it tells me to do. Today I will be taught the word of God. Today I will be taught the word of God. And this word is changing my life. And this word is changing my life. Because that's what it's designed to do. I receive it as a seed. I receive it as a seed that is producing, that is producing a hundredfold and more. A hundredfold and more in my life. In my life. In Jesus' mighty name. Jesus in mighty Jesus' name. mighty name, we pray. Amen. And amen. And amen. Colossians chapter three. And um, let us go. Let us and tomatoes go. To verse 10. And have put on the new man. Say this with me. I put on the new man. Put on the new man. Woo! Woman. May, matter of fact, say it. Some of you were a little weak and softy like that. Don't say that. Be bold about it. I put on the new man. Who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him. Who created him? 
That's who you get. You get, get huh. That's who you put on. You put on the new man. Just do it. Just look at yourself and say, I'm a whole new man. I'm a new man. First, Second Corinthians 5.17 says, any man that isn't Christ is a new creation. Old things have been passed away, have passed away, and all things have become new. Think about that. And now we're reading it right here in Colossians chapter 3, foot, 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 huh, verse 10. Verse, now let's get to 11. There's neither Jew nor Greek, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian or Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all and in all. Say it with me. I'm a new man. I, you might say I'm a new woman, but that's all right. That's all right. Now, we're going to read 12 through 17 just because it's just good cruise reading verses. Colossians 3, 12 through 17. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercy, put on kindness, put on humility, meekness, long-suffering. Put on bearing with one another. And forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another. Even as Christ forgave you. So you also must do to them. Amen. But above all these things. Say it. Above all that. Above all that. I love this. Put on love. Amen. Want to do it? Just put it on. Amen. Wait. Hold on. I got my long sleeve shirt here in case it got cold. Ready? I'm going to put on love. <laughs> Pastor, don't you know you're not supposed to do that right on the program? Well, yeah. But God just said, put on love. That's how you put it on, guys. Put your sleeves in. Put your arms in. You work it around. That's how you put on love. Put on love, which is the bond of perfection. Now watch. When we go to 1 John 4, 17 and 18, it says perfect love cast out fear. What does? Perfect love. Perfect love. Cast out fear. Why? Fear has torment. So Paul just said here in verse number 14, put above all, put on love. And then in the apostle John said, and when you do, the love you put on is going to cast out the fear in other people. You want to say it with me? The perfect love of God in me. Cast out the fear on you. Cast out the fear on you. It doesn't matter who you talk to. Those words work. You might say, Pastor, I tried them and they didn't work. Well, they worked for you, didn't they? Because you're the one that was walking in love. Whether the other person was or not, who knows? Perfect love. God said, perfect love cast out fear. And Paul said, above all, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. 15, <clears throat> let the peace of God rule in your heart, to which you are also called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Well, the only way you're going to get the word of Christ in you richly is put it in, put it in, put it in, put it in, living it, living it, living it, living it, living it, living it. If all you get is a little devil do you 40 minutes on a Sunday, the word of God is not going to live, it's not going to dwell in you richly. And then when the when the dwell in richly starts to evaporate and go down, the next time you pray for somebody, you're like, 
Where did all my strength go? Where, where, did, where did all my stuff go? Wait, what it comes down to is how much word have you put down inside your heart? One person, many people have said to me, Pastor, I want to put the word in my heart. How do I do it? Ready? Five points. Number one, pick a subject. Doesn't matter what it is. Let's say it's faith. Number one, pick a subject. Number two, find the verses on those on that subject. Just start going. You might have to say to some of us, wait, I need some good verses on this. All right. So don't just find them. Find them and write them down. So find a subject, pick a subject, find some verses. Write them down. Ready? Number four is speak them in the first person. Why? Because you got to make these verses work for you. If you're always speaking them in the third person, you've never made it personalized. And you got to get it personal. Put your own name in there. Write it out with your name in there. <clears throat> and number five, speak it until the revelation manifests down inside and you say, oh, my God, I got it. <laughs> and then you got to build you about eight or ten of those things. And if you need some, we got some built that you can learn. You can look at and learn and grow from. That's just that's how we operate. And then keep them moving. Keep them coming. Say them over and over and over and over. We've got several confessions. It's called a confession list is what it's called. We've got several confessions. We've probably said 250, 300 times. But that's also why on that subject, we live in the peace of God and the strength of God and the wisdom of God. Why? Because we picked the subject. We found the verses. We wrote them down. We made it personal. And we speak it, speak it, speak it, speak it, speak it, speak it, speak it until it comes to pass in our life. It's called meditation. Now, if I went through too fast, did I get it? Pick a subject, find the verses on the subject, write them down, speak them in the first person, and speak it until the revelation manifests in your life. Shannon Tony. Good job. Shannon Tony coming through again. Look at that, Wilma. Aren't you glad of this young lady? This is yarn right here, Wilma. This one's yarn. Y'all be proud of this and right here. <laughs> Brother Mike's back in the hotel going, hold, hold up. She's mine. Been doing this to get since her belong to her mother thing. Yeah, but Brother Mike, every mom will say, she came from me. <laughs> Anyways. I'm back over here in verse 16. <laughs> That's awesome, woman. You got a, you have a wonderful daughter. You really do. You really do. We're glad she's a part of this. Verse 16, 316. Let the word of Christ dwell in your wrist richly. Wisdom, teaching. Look at this. Admonishing one another. How? In how, how, how? <laughs> Psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. I know some of you might be saying, Pastor, nobody's going to want me to sing psalms to them. Well, that might be the case. That could be the case. But here's the thing. What he's saying is you and I teaching and admonishing and blessing other people by us. That's the process of what we do here. And then verse 17, whatever you do, you might want to circle it. Whatever you do, whether it's in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to the God, to God the Father, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now, don't worry. That was all just a warm up. That was all to get just get us ready 
for the word of God for tonight. Now, where we've been is in 2 Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter chapter 1. And last night, we got down to about verse 5, where we added to our faith knowledge, and we added to our knowledge virtue, all right? And <clears throat> no, we added to the faith virtue and to the virtue we added knowledge. Now, <clears throat> we're going to go on from there tonight. So I want you to get this reference place. And then I want you to get one of your sheets of paper and hold it there because that's where we're going. But I, as soon as I got there, I'm like, no. I'm going back to John chapter 17. What's our second Peter reference verse 25? Yeah. First John. Oh, right, yeah, right. That's first Peter 1. And we're going to be in verse 5. That's where we're going to start. No. Now, I um I want to I want to say this. Because ever since we studied being one with the Father back in the fall. My life has not been the same on that since then. And um, it's a wonderful, it's a wonderful doctrine that we taught, but it's not a doctrine. Say this with me. It's a reality. I am one with the Father. Amen. You might say, Pastor, how can you be one with the Father? He... He's in heaven and I'm on earth. I, I mean, Jesus came into my heart. I understand that. Well, but wait, it's not that Jesus came into your heart. It's that you have now taken on the divine nature of God. Because of the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Because of that. You now get to have the, the very nature of God on the inside of you. We just saw Paul say, you, you put on the new man. Well, all of a sudden, if we're, we're going to get this, that's going to hit deep inside of us. That's like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. There's a new man, a new person inside of me. And when it hits, you're going to be like, Oh, Jesus. And you'll never be the same again. Because it's really what goes on on the inside of the believer. And then all of a sudden, everywhere you go, God is using you to bless another person. It's not because you're, you're, wait a minute, let me see how to say this. Because I was getting ready to say what I used to say. Pause and have a drink of coffee for a minute. Father, in Jesus' name, bless Christine and Rebecca with ample amount of in the mighty name of Jesus all through their house. May they have a couple in every room. We bless Christine and Rebecca today. We bless their bodies to be filled with strength and health. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for them. In Jesus' mighty name. Now, mighty. now what I started to say, I'm not going to say. I'm going to say something different now. All right? Say it. I am a new creation. I am a new being. And I literally have the nature of God. Hey, Chris Rich is here. Welcome, Chris. It's good to have you with us tonight. Second Peter chapter one. And we're going to start verse 11. No, no, no. Verse five is where he was last night. And I'm going to read those words again, but our, 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 our verse where we're going to start is six. I want to read five. But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith, virtue. And to virtue, knowledge. And to knowledge, self-control. 
Now, we're going to begin to speak these in definition form. Last night, while we were on the program, I talked to you about the Bible app called eSword. And when you go on eSword, there's uh, the first Bible that they will download for you onto your computer, onto your phone, is the King James Version. And it'll not only have the King James Version, but it'll have the King James and a little plus sign. What does that mean? It's King James plus the Strong's Exhaustive Concordance, yeah, which really and which is really good because when you get to some of these $5 words, you can look that word up and see what it meant in the Greek because the Greek and the Hebrew are a totally different language than the English language. They're so more express, so much more expressive, so much more uh, fluid and fluent and vibrant. There, there's, there are amazing languages compared to the English, like Greek. Greek will have a rule for, for grammatical structure. And then it'll have an exception to the rule, an exception to the exception to the exception to the exception to the exception. And then you take the Greek book and you throw it right out the window. <laughs> You're like, right, like, how am I supposed to remember all that? So it's a powerful tool. I'm going to I'm going to say thank you, Shannon. I, I knew you'd put it in there. I'm going to mention it again tonight. It's called e-sword.net. All right. And. It's one of those powerful tools that you can use. It's on your computer and it's on uh, your phone. Now, I know on my computer, I think on my computer, I have like uh, 17 translations or something. Something like that. But you can download a whole mess of different translations. <clears throat> you might say, Pastor, what do I do about all them translations? Because that doesn't seem to make sense to me. Oh, that's awesome. But here's what you get. When there are translation and not a paraphrase, you get a couple different groups of men who were studying it as translators, and you get to see what they saw. Because everybody grows up in a different region, in a different part of the world, and they are uh, they are just, you know, it's everybody's got their thing. Everybody's got their deal. And all of a sudden, you get another picture. Now, it doesn't mean that one word's wrong and the other word's right. What it means is, let's read and see the harmony of Scripture, which means it'll match from the Genesis to Revelation, and it will match the character of God. Now, some of these translations... They are trying to make very modern. They take out words. Who knows why they do that? I'm teaching you this because just like tonight, I'm here in First Peter, Second Peter, chapter one, and I'm going to look up the word knowledge. Add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge. Now watch. Add to your virtue and virtue. We learned last night is valor and moral goodness and excellence. Say it with me. Excellence isn't perfection, although I am perfect. Excellence is when you wake up today, you give everything you've got all day long today, just like you did yesterday. And today's going to be a greater day than yesterday was because you added more excellence from your last trip down the road. Now, here we go. More, where, where to go? Add to your faith, you believe in God, virtue, moral excellence. Add to virtue, knowledge. Now, that word, <clears throat> that word knowledge is the word genosis or gnosis, all right? Depending on who you are. which means knowing, knowledge, and the growth or the deeper, more perfect revelation. Literally what this is, is add to your faith and your virtue 
revelation. Say it. I need to understand the word of God. What does that mean? You got to get the understanding of how all this stuff works together. Now, you might be one of those people that came here and said, wow, pastor, I had a whole bunch of religious stuff that um, really seemed to have me bound. But boy, I don't have it no more. Well, that's good. That's what this place is all about. Well, our, our, one of our very purposes is to break that religious stuff off of you and help you be able to just say, wait, what does the Bible actually say? Thank God for the church I grew up in. They trained me. Just broke down. I want you to get this down where I can see it and understand it. And now what happens? All of a sudden, all those pieces that you had throughout your life, they make one big old amazing circle. And there'll come a point where revelation will hit you and you'll be like, oh, my God, in heaven, every single bit of this stuff makes sense now. And you'll be going everywhere telling everybody. And they'll say, well, isn't that something? They got religion. And you'll say, I didn't get religion. I got rid of religion. And I found out who Jesus Christ of Nazareth is. Say it. It's revelation. It's the deeper, more perfect, enlarged knowledge of who God is. But when, that, when you get that, it's not like you sit around and like, no, back in the day, I knew what propitiation was. No. No. It's not understanding big words. It's knowing how to go next door and talk to your neighbor and get them saved. It's knowing how, well, Sister Wilma did it. She went and met with a friend who had serious amount of grief in her life. I don't know what Wilma did, but she came back saying she was in better condition. Well, what was she? She was to that person, God Almighty, that God had put in Wilma throughout her life. Wait. Robert today stopped and prayed for two police officers. And Shannon prayed for a widow. And Shannon prayed for a widow. Amen. And we've been asking, and Mary Pastorick showed up. I'm not sure what that means, Mary, but we love you and we're glad you're here, whether you're pleasingly plump or not. Whatever you said. What did she say? <laughs> Speaking life in my plump body. Lord Jesus, help her. <laughs> Too much information. No, 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 no. We're glad to have you, Mary Pastor Rick. We love you. See, I want you to think about this. Every single day. I want you to think this every single day. When you wake up in the morning. I want you to say. Who am I for you today? Yeah. Father. Say it with me. I'm just like my father. Because he and I are one. Do you realize that what you're adding to your faith is the nature of God? You're adding to your faith the glory and the nature of who God is. And the understanding comes that, oh, my Lord, you mean I actually get to be this for God? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. It, it won't be long, guys. And in your life, you'll be known.
it. I'm going to be known as the person who prays. I, there was a period of time I was driving my son to Christian school. And I would stop at this little gas station right by the school, out in the, way out in the sticks. Well, um, uh, Wilma knows where it's at. Meredith Grade on M18 between Holton Lake, Prudenville, and Gladwin. Little town there called Meredith Grade. I'd stop at that little grocery store there, little gas station. And he's out in the middle of the sticks and always had the best gas price. So after stopping there a few times, getting a cup of coffee, standing there talking to the man that owned it, nice young, a nice man, very, not a young man, but he, anyways, don't worry about that. He, one day he said, what are you? You a preacher? I said, yes, sir, I am. He goes, do you like pray for people and stuff? I said, yeah, matter of fact, God told me to bring a prayer cloth in for you today. He goes, what? I pull a prayer cloth out and I got his name written on it. I said, I, I was told to bring this in here and bless you and call God's blessing down on your business. He took that prayer cloth and went right over to the bulletin board when you walk in the store where everybody put all their stuff and he moved everything and stuck it right up in that corner. He said, that's where it's going to stay from now on. We were standing there talking. I want you to see this. And a man walked in and went to the back of the store. And Brother Shane said, it wasn't a man, it was a lady. He said, Brother, she's got cancer. Would you pray for her? I said, yes, I would. He come back up. She's at the counter checking out her stuff. He said, he said her name. He said, this brother behind you right here is a pastor. Would you like him to pray for you to be healed of cancer? She goes, are you kidding me? And standing right there in that store, the little, the little convenience store, I prayed for her to be healed from cancer. She began to cry. And guess what? She was healed from cancer. Now watch. The next day I come back, he said, I got you a stool right here. Sit over there at that other side of the of the thing right there. And uh, let's just talk for a while. And, and so he'd get me a cup of coffee and I'd sit over there and talk and people would come in and he'd say, now this person's got a back problem. Will you pray for them? And I literally sat there in this little convenience store having a time of ministry with all of these people for an hour every day. It was amazing. Why? Because that's the nature of Jesus and he's on the inside of me. And that man looked at me and said, I know who you are. Sit right there. So guess what? I got to where I was there all the time. You want to know what? That man's business like tripled that year. It was the greatest year he had ever had. Why? Not because of me, because of the gift of God on the inside of me. I didn't even know how to say I was becoming one with the father and was giving off of his nature as I was at that time. I mean, I don't, I didn't have the revelation I have today. But when they said, I need prayer, I was going to pray for them to be yeah, healed. Yeah, People were healed of back pain and all kinds of stuff. <laughs> they love it. One man, one man, he said, pray for that guy. But he said, please do it out there. I'm like, well, what's that mean? He goes, I don't need him in here when you start praying for him. Just pray out in the parking lot. So I go out there and I said, hi, you know, <laughs> Brother Shane said, uh, and I said his name. He said, he said, I ought to come pray for you. Now, this is uh, this is as serious you can be. Now think about it. the guy's a marine, he's a combat marine, and he goes, "Well, hallelujah, glory to God, hallelujah!" He just starts jumping. Whoa, he's out in the parking lot. He's jumping. <laughs> glory! He grabs me and he shakes me. Hallelujah, glory to God! And I turn around, and look at in the in the store is Shane, and he's like, <laughs> oh my "No way." I'm like, brother, what is it? Check this out. He said, I've been praying for God to bring me someone who has an answer and an anointing to help me see who I am. And he said, wow. it's you. 
And he grabbed me and shook me again. I'm like, oh, Jesus, Lord, have mercy on my soul. Give <laughs> me the right answer now, Lord. Now, now, see, that's not because of me. That's because of the nature of God that's on the inside of you. Say it. Fill me with all of you, Lord. Fill me with all of you, Fill me with all of you Lord. You want to say it? Lord, I'm I'm ready for you to use me, even in the smallest of ways. I mean, I think it's amazing. Shannon said that today she went to the mall to find a widow and pray for her. Is that amazing or what? It's amazing. Where are we at? Does anybody know? Knowledge. <laughs> All right. Add to your knowledge, add to the revelation of who God is. Temperance. Now, I'm going to give you this word just because I want you to say, can I do that too, Pastor? Yes, you can. It's right here. Anybody can do it. Download the app and it'll be right on your phone. Are you ready? This word is the word temperance, which is Engkratia. Engkratia. That made you feel real professional and astoundedly <laughs> astute, didn't it? Well, what's temperance? Self control. Right. Say it self control. Self control. Have you had a moment lately when you didn't have self control? I think Brother Mike did because he said he was eating peanut butter fudge and not sharing it with all of us. Help him, Lord, to have a little more control and send some around the neighborhood. <laughs> Add to faith. Let's back up. Add to faith. What's faith? You know God exists and you know he's going he's gonna to reward you when you diligently seek him. Add to your faith virtue. That's, that's moral goodness and excellence. Add to virtue knowledge. That's revelation. Add to revelation, temperance, which is self-control. The only times in your life you ever you ever was sorry for what you said or did is when you wasn't using self-control. Mm -hmm. Boy, that's the truth, isn't it? Now, wait a minute. Jesus used really good self-control because uh, he stood there that one day and braided a whip just watching all them people in the temple. And he's braiding a whip. That's self-control. I'm going to beat the fire out of these boys. And then he kicked the tables over. Because they were being wicked in the house of God. And they were using what was legal to do in the house of God. Sell people who didn't have sheep, sheep. That was legal. It's part of the law. But they were doing it, giving them inferior sacrifices. Charging them exorbitant amounts. And what did Jesus say? You made this place a den of thieves. And he used great self-control and drove them people right out of the temple. Hello? He was using self-control on both sides. Listen, when you and I speak over the vets and over this nation, you and I are using self-control. Because if it was me, I'd call fire down out of heaven and burn all of them up. But there's innocent people there that God wants. So what makes you the valuable person in your community? Everywhere you go is you and I using self-control. Say it. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Now, let's say something. If you grew up in a family where there was a bunch of rage happening, self-control will, will be a challenge to you. Say it. I'm a new creation. That old stuff has passed away and all things have become new. I have great self-control because I have the nature of my father. And what is father's name? God. 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 I have the nature of God. Now, let's grab it real quick. Verse 4, 
Don't, don't lose our place with self-control. But look at verse 4. By which have been given to us exceedingly, that's a big word, exceedingly great and precious promises. What does that mean? It is all-encompassing. It is all-fulfilling. It is all-enrapturing. It is all-powerful. It's exceedingly, abundantly. Look at what it says. That, that through these promises, you may become partakers of the divine nature. Pastor, I never heard anybody preach this in my whole life. I know, neither have I until I started preaching it. <laughs> well, I'm sure Dr. Barkley preached it. I, I just didn't get it, didn't see it, because the revelation has come to me now. Now, while you're there, in verse 4, run back to, to John chapter 17 again. Don't worry, I'm going to milk this all the way to 9 o'clock or something. <laughs> Because see, all of a sudden, you say, I have the divine nature of God in me. Mm -hmm. Well, guys, as soon as that revelation hits, there won't be any memories of that other nature because there'll be no desire for it at all. Yeah. It will be so foreign to you that it'll have no effect. You'll, you'll be, you'll say like Brother Hagin, that's just a picture. That's just a picture. I have a completely new nature. Now watch John 17, 20. This is Jesus. This is his last prayer before he goes out of the upper room and is, um, suffers in the garden and then is captured and is crucified. This is his last prayer. Verse 20. I do not pray for these alone. But for those who will believe in me. Through their word. And that is you and me. Right here today. You and I are believing John's word. Paul's word. Peter's word. In this message right now tonight. In this teaching. In this time of discipleship, we're believing Jesus' word. We're believing the Father's word. We're believing Peter's word. We're believing Paul's word. And that's exactly what Jesus prayed for. He was praying for you and me because we would believe these men's word. Say this with me. Jesus prayed a personal prayer for me. If you've never done it, Read John 14, 15, 16, and 17 out loud. Because it's pretty powerful. It's Jesus' last instruction to his disciples. Let's keep reading here in verse 21. That they all may be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you. That's really big. Mm -hmm. Jesus just said, help them be one. Like you, Father, are in me. Pastor, that's impossible. Except that those are red letters. Them babies are so hot, they turn red. And that's Jesus' words. And he literally said that they may be one as you, Father, are in me. Jesus is praying that we would be one with the Father. And I in you. Look at what it says. That they also may be one in us. <laughs> I love it. That the world may believe that you sent me. You and I. Being one in the Father and Jesus lets the whole world know that God sent Jesus to this earth 
and you and I get to introduce him to it. Yeah, pretty soon the tent meeting won't be able to hold all the people that's trying to get there. You just keep speaking over this. You just keep speaking over it. Speak on, speak about revival all over this whole nation. Hey, Dan Cottle's with us. Good to have you, brother Dan. Wherever in the world, wherever in the world that you might be tonight, we bless you and we strengthen you and we help you right now in Jesus' mighty name, driving down the road or whatever you're doing, man. Love you, Dan. 22. Look at this verse. And the glory that you gave me, I have given them. Look at your Bible. I am not making these words up. <laughs> some people are some, some people are like, hold on, hold on, hold on, Pastor. What are you trying to do over there? No, no, no. Just read the Bible. And the glory which the Father gave Jesus has been given to us that we may be one just as he was one with the Father. Now see, all of a sudden, when Peter says, add to your faith, what you're adding is the very nature of God. And as you get the revelation, you just, oh, well, yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Wait, I need that leather coat too. Right? It's, just, it's no different. You women, how, how many of you women bought a pair of shoes? And you're like, oh, this needs a purse. Right? And and as soon as you got the, the shoes and the purse, you're like, oh, I got to have earrings. And wait, and a necklace. Come on, admit it. Admit it. You guys have to, you women have to admit it. You do this to us all the time. And you're like, you're like, I don't need this purse. I need a bag. I need a bag. I really, I really need a bag for this. And if you're crazy enough, you might need a new do and a hat. But see, but see, this is what Jesus is doing right now, right here to you and me. Pastor, what am I going to do with all this? Go out into your world and change it. Amen. You're going to go into your world and change it. You are going to go into your world, world and change. See, look at Wilma's the only one so far that has said, yes, we do. <laughs> Wilma, thank you for being such an honest <laughs> child. <laughs> <laughs> and you might need to get your nails did too. You never know. But that's this is no different. Uh, you know, watch this. I know how the, this pastor knows how to get brownie points. All you women are so beautiful. <laughs> 22. And the glory which you gave me, I have given them that they may be one just as we are one. 23. I in them and you in me that they may be made perfect in one. <laughs> Shannon says, I can honestly say I've never done that. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Did you just read that? We get to have the glory that the Father gave to Jesus. <laughs> We get to have the glory that the Father gave to Jesus. We get to have the glory that the Father gave to Jesus. Well, whatever in the world do we need it for? Because we're bringing the kingdom yes. to this earth as it is in heaven Amen. and we're bringing it to your community. Yeah. We're bringing it right there. Does your community have an illiteracy problem? That's not the school's responsibility. That's the church's responsibility. 
Does your community have a poverty problem? That's not the business's responsibility. That's the church responsibility. Poverty is a demon that must be bound. Yes. And you and I have the gospel that preaches to bind that demon. I'm, for all of you men, I got something started tonight with the ladies. And they're gonna, pretty soon we're going to have pictures. Look at my new shoes I just got. Look at, look at this. I got my nails did. Whoa, look at that. Look at that. Look at these new eyelids I got. Back to 2 Peter chapter 1, and we'll bring you back to earth. Wait, Mary's got us back to earth. Me either, Shannon. I just have to have spinach with fried potatoes. Spinach with fried potatoes. Well, hallelujah. Wow, that sounds I haven't tried that yeah, before. That's but. really good, Mary. I'm gonna go try some. No, I still got a little bit of uh corned beef and cabbage to eat yet. A little bit. <laughs> Who knows where we're at? Oh, self-control. That's where we are. Amen. But wait, here's the cool thing about this. You don't have to use self-control in how much of God you add to yourself. Amen. Amen. How much of how much of him does he want you to have? All of him. That's what he wants you to have. Amen. Add to your self-control, your temperance. Uh-oh. Patience. Now here is a really good word. People have said, don't ever pray for patience because you'll get it immediately. Well, but but let's talk about that for a minute. Patience is actually a fruit of the spirit. Patience isn't you pray for that and God sends the devil to you to teach you patience. Let's establish a fact again about our God. He never uses his enemy to teach you a lesson. Hello? Our God is not going to borrow the enemy for a few minutes to teach you a lesson. That is not his nature. I declare right now, in the name of Jesus, this signal is strong, it's stable, it's solid, and it goes all the way to the end. So we are finished, and it goes from my computer with a full signal in great shape to your device, whatever you have, in the mighty name of Jesus. Good night, Velma. We love you. Night, Velma. See, we got to get the we got to get the revelation. Patience isn't a virtue held by some. Um, possess it if you can. Seldom found in women and never found in men. Have you ever heard anybody say that? No. Oh, that's a statement I've heard for many, many years from people really? in the church. It's not a virtue. It's a fruit of the spirit. It's a fruit of the spirit. That means when you're filled with the spirit, you automatically get patience. Wait, don't shake your head. No, shake your head. Yes. So patience, cheerful, endurance, sustaining constancy. Cheerful, endurance, sustaining constancy. There's some big words, aren't they? It is. Cheerful endurance. Patience. But see, I, I don't know, Shannon, and that's a great way to say it. And you can't imagine how many people in the church teach that doctrine. But see, that's because they've never had that, that, that instruction that says, hold it. God is God all the way through. God is God. Satan is an angel. He's his enemy. And God will never use his enemy to teach you anything because he's got the beautiful Holy Spirit to teach you. Oh, that's right. They taught you that the Holy Spirit died with the last apostle. Get wow. yourself in agreement with God Almighty. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus.
Amen. Amen, Mary. Look at here. Julian and Bamala's with us. God does not need the devil to teach us any valuable lesson. He uses his wisdom to teach us directly. Come on, guys. Everybody's preaching it tonight. Somebody else preach it a little bit. See, the only reason anybody would teach that as a doctrine in the church is they don't know the character of God and they've not been taught the full counsel of the word that God will never violate his character ever, ever. So when they say, what about Job or Paul's thorn in the flesh? Why don't you go just read what that was all about and let the Bible teach you what it is. One person said to me a while ago, they said, Pastor, can you remind me what it was you taught about Paul and the thorn of the flesh? I said, yeah, why don't you just read the chapter? They're like, what? I said, just read the chapter. They're like, um, I have been reading that chapter. I'm like, well, no, stop, slow down and read it out loud because the chapter makes it very clear. They're like, are you serious? I'm like, yeah. And they're like, well, we read the chapter. I'm like, I know, but this time, slow down and read it out loud. And they called me after, I don't know, about 20 minutes. They're like, wow. That, that's, not, that's not too hard to understand, is it? I'm like, no, it's not. Paul says exactly what it is. It's a messenger from Satan to buffet him. God didn't put it on him. God ain't going to put nothing bad on a good child. There's no way. Paul had so much revelation that, that the enemy attacked him. Yeah. I'm preaching so loud. They're hearing me clear across the apartment complex. They are. <laughs> Did they say hallelujah? Hallelujah. <laughs> Where are we at? We got to finish these, these tonight. You ready? Add to your patience godliness. Oh, I like this one. Godliness, this word is Yosebia. Yosebia, which literally it means being like God and holiness. Being like God and holiness, living and walking holy. But really, guys, when you get this revelation like we've got now, that um, I've got the nature of God in me. What, it, what is the challenge to holiness? The greatest challenge to holiness, the greatest challenge to, to the Christian life, once you, once you truly understand you got God's nature, is that because he uses you in many powerful ways, you don't let it become pride and arrogance and, and all about you. Because yeah. it was arrogance that got Satan. He was the most beautiful of all the cherubs. And, and what ends up happening is people start getting the power of God and things happen and miracles happen, signs, wonders happen. And, and you got to continually, you got to continually say to yourself every day, hold it. Without Jesus, God, and the Holy Spirit on the inside of me, I am man most miserable. I've got him. I'm bold. I'm confident. I know who I am. But all of this praise and honor and glory goes to that crown that I'm getting built with many jewels, the lives of people. And I'm going to take that crown and put it at Jesus' feet and say, you alone are worthy. So I'm going to say it here every day. I'm going to say it every day as I make it. And when I present it to him, it's going to be a crown. Say it. When I walk in the throne room, when I walk in the throne room Jesus is going to be like, look who's here. <laughs> Because, see, you and I can decide to have a big crown to give to Jesus. Now, I'm pushing the line with some people here. Chris Rich, I haven't seen anything move over on YouTube. Are you still there? You might be baby rocking. Yeah, she, I know you might be baby rocking. I'm just checking, making sure YouTube is still there. It looks like it is. Yeah. Now watch this. You and I got to know who we are. You have to. And once you figure it out, 
you're going to you're going to function in great power and strength but those people are jewels in your crown and the only purpose of that crown is to present it before Jesus and say Jesus look at the jewels i brought to you with you living on the inside of me changing my world wherever i went every day and what is he going to say well done good and faithful servant. When they crank up the fire, you're not even going to be concerned. You'd be like, try them works by fire, boy. Let's go. Because we're judging ourselves every single day. And they'll hit it. I don't know if firemen, I don't understand this. Because there's no fire that destroys in heaven except at the throne. There's no destruction in heaven. I don't. I don't understand what that's all about, but it, we know this process happens there. But it's not death. It's not death. It's blessing. It's your crown. What's in your crown today? Have you been working, building a crown? If you haven't, get busy today. You still got time. You still got time. Just keep your heart right. Keep your motives right. Keep everything about you right. What are you going to do? You're going to be a blessing to everybody you meet. And every one of them, they find their way to God. It's going to be added to your crown. Think about think about everybody that's going to be added to our crown because of this last 12 months that we've been here. We've not come here and done anything except just be here. Everybody that's come, we welcomed in. We treated you like you're a, a born-again, spirit-filled believer because that's what you are if you're here very long. And now we we just get you fired up, stoked up, built up, transformed. Phew, turn you loose. And now you're the example for any new person that comes. Yeah. And they're like, well, what can you do around this place? Uh, we go in the world. We go in the world. You need to be discipled? Yeah, well, look at here. We got all these videos right here to help you do it. And in a matter of a couple of weeks, they're going to just be like, they're literally, they're literally going to be able to go from zero to wide open in a matter of six weeks. Oh, and these guys are so good at discipling and praying and teaching. And Say it with me. God, help us go to the next level. Yeah, God, help us go to the next level. Actually, we're already at the next level. Help us figure out how to function here like we need to. Because we're already there. He already told us we have been promoted. And now we just got to be at this level and learn to function here. And hallelujah. Add to your patience godliness, which is holiness, being like God. And to godliness, brotherly kindness. This is... Philadelphia love. Add to your virtue. Let's see. Add to faith, virtue, virtue, knowledge, knowledge, temperance, temperance, patience, patience, godliness. And now we're going to add brotherly kindness, where you treat people with great kindness that are close to you. Great kindness. Where we are. It's who we are. Say it. It's where we are. And it's who we are. And it's who we are. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. What's that mean? You love your brothers. You welcome them. Say it. Do you ladies say it? I love my sisters. Love my sisters. Amen. And my brothers. It's, it's the kind of love that causes the world to come together and make things very powerful. It's actually the same word that you get fraternity from. Oh. Brothers and sisters. It's what you and I say here. This is a family. We are brothers and sisters. We love one another. Welcome, Melissa Wright Thorsby. Good to have you with us tonight. Another one of the family. Amen. I love my sisters. Amen. Lauren Raymond. Phyllis K. Raymond, Jim Raymond. Amen. Bless you guys for being here. And we got one more. Add to chari add to your brotherly kindness, 
charity, or when you go to the word charity, that is the word agape love. And that is God's love. That means love people with the love of God. Say with me. I got to love people with the love of God. Wait, you might say, Pastor, there's some people hard to love. No, they're not. No. Because we have the nature of God. What's hard to love is somebody when you're functioning in your flesh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why? Because when you're functioning in your flesh, you have your own personal taste, your own likes and dislikes, prejudice, whatever. But when you're functioning in God's love, it's not hard to love them. Why? Because they're just another person just like you. Can I get an amen from anybody? Amen. You know, I've been studying all the verses with the word father in them in the New Testament. It's an amazing study. And uh, it, it just really just gets your mind, your soul, your spirit, gets everything just cranking because you're not reading whole chapters. You're not even reading whole sets of, of thought process. You're reading all these random verses about the word, the name father. And I'm going to tell you something right now. All of a sudden you get a whole different picture of this whole father thing. Why? Because you're reading the Bible. And you're seeing what Jesus said about the father. All of a sudden you realize Jesus didn't do anything except what he saw the father doing. Well, pastor, I'm a good Christian. I know, I know, I know. I've been saying the same thing. But Jesus didn't do anything except he could see the father doing it. And he must have got real good at it because he went around healing all who were oppressed of the devil because God was with him. And this is where God wants you in me. Say this with me. All of these things are in me. All of these things are in me. Right now. Because I have the nature of Almighty God. Because I have the nature of Almighty God. Because I have the nature. Now, let's go to verse number eight. Ready? For if these things are in you, are yours and abound. So say this with me. I have the nature of God. I have the nature of God. And I'm changing that if to since. Since I have the nature of God. Ready? So let's read verse 8 with since in it instead of if. For since, For since these things are in me and abound, I will neither be barren or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Say it. Since they're in me. Wait, Pastor, how are they in me again? Because you've become a partaker of the very divine nature of God. And Jesus prayed for us that we would be one with the Father and with him and the Holy Spirit. So the very divine nature of God is now on the inside of you. It's now there. It's now there. I'm going to read it again. Verse 8. For since these things are in me and abound, I will neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. You can even take it another step. You can say, since these things are in me and abound, I will always be fruitful. I will always be abundantly fruitful in every area. Amen. You could take the barren and unfruitful word out because you now have fruit that remains and that comes from Jesus and somebody ought to shout glory, hallelujah. As life traveled down the road of hills and valleys, I always had the mindset that we were to be like Jesus. And he must see that in me and he would be there for me to keep me going forward with me. Still slide side by side and he carries me from time to time. Thank you, Jesus, for being with Mary Pastor Rick. Amen and amen and amen. See, guys, all of a sudden, 
we're like, hold it. This Christian life just became real simple. Now, all I got to do is realize that the nature of God is on the inside of me. It's not the nature of a church. It's not the nature of a religious organization. Thank God for them. You, you, may, you may be a part of a church. You might be. But it's not that church. It's not that building. You are partakers of the very divine nature of God. Verse number nine. He who lacks these things is short-sighted even to blindness and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. I mean, Peter says it right there in black and white. If you're lacking faith and you're lacking virtue and knowledge and self-control and perseverance and godliness and brotherly kindness and the agape love, then if you lack these things, you're sort short-sighted and you might even be considered blind and you forgot or nobody's just ever trained you that that nature changed when you came and found Jesus. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Verse 10. Therefore, brethren and sisters, be even more diligent to make your calling and election certain. For if or when you do these things, you will never stumble because an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, right here on this earth. <laughs> Peter says, be diligent to make your calling and election sure. Now, let's look at one more set of verses, and then we're going to be done. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. First Corinthians chapter 12. Verse number four through 11. She's talking about the body of Christ. And the gifts of the spirit. There are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. There are diversity of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. The manifestation of the spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. Say this. I receive the Holy Spirit, I receive the Holy spirit. and his gift in me. And his gift in me. Now, the reason I'm coming here is when you understand this, you'll never get yourself elevated in pride. Because you realize it ain't me doing all this. Even though you know you're powerful, you're strong, you're filled with the Holy Spirit. You can cast out demons, heal the sick, raise the dead. You can do it all. But you're going to say, wait a minute, it's not me. It's one and the same spirit. It's the spirit of God that's doing it on the inside. of you. Now watch. To one is given the word of wisdom. That may have been what Shannon was functioning in today. Yeah. To another, the word of knowledge through the same spirit. And to another, faith by the same spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the same spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, the discerning of spirits. To another, different kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. But one and the same spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as he wills. And it doesn't necessarily mean that if you got the gift of healing, that's the only one you're going to function in all your life. Right. Say this with me. 
Use me, Holy Spirit. Use me, Holy Spirit. However you want. However you on want. whatever day. On whatever day. Amen. What does that mean, Pastor? That means don't get stuck in one gift. It's not you doing it. It's the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, if you're called to the fivefold ministry, you're going to either be a pastor, a prophet, apostle, evangelist, or a teacher. That'll be your gift. You think about me right here. I am operating right now in the, in the, I'm functioning as an apostle. Someone sent to do this work. I'm operating as a, as a uh, pastor. I'm operating as a teacher. We get people saved. That's evangelist. And he speaks to me to prophesy. But I don't sit down tonight and say, well, tonight, tonight I'm going to prophesy. You don't do that. You, you, We come in here and we say, Holy Spirit, use me. You come in here and say, Holy Spirit, use me. You wake up in the morning and say, I am yours. Holy Spirit, use me how you want me to, to be used. Because if you get stuck in, I am, I am the word of knowledge in my church. Well, so no, you're no, you're uh, you're now elevated. If he used you once that time, shout glory. If he used something else, shout glory in that. But see, it, that's where the human nature comes in and pride starts working. Well, don't let that happen. You got the nature of God. Yeah. Here am I. Use me. Well, pastor, how'd you get the gift of being a pastor? Um, that was put in me when I was conceived. You don't do anything to earn this. You are called by God and ordained by God to do this ministry. I don't know how else to say it to you. Um, let me say it this way. Do not covet this position if that's not what you are ordained by God to do. This is a very, very serious position to be in. Severe, severe blessing. There's great honor, but there's double accountability on the day of judgment. Use me, Holy Spirit, Use me, Holy Spirit. To, be what you want me to be you want me to be. See, now all of a sudden when you wake up in the morning, everywhere you go, you're being led by the Holy Spirit of God. You're no longer saying, well, today I'm going to go cast a demon out of somebody. Well, all right. If you wake up in your prayer time and God says, go cast out a demon, then go do it. But don't wake up and set out your plan for a day of how you're going to be led by the Holy Spirit because you're not a good Holy Spirit and neither am I. Amen? Amen? It's the Holy Spirit leading us. And he's using us. Look at what it says, verse 7. The manifest... Pleasure. <laughs> now listen, I was trying to say manifestation and fudge and God bless Mike all at the same time. The manifestation... Of the spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. But all of it comes at the direction of the Holy Spirit. Even in a church building. Even in a church building. It's like the other night. I wanted to preach for about two hours on that. But I was instructed by the Holy Spirit to have Mike talk about the tithe and offering. Why? I don't know. I don't know. Who knows? He just did. He just did. And that's what we did. And hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Pastor, what's that do? I don't know. I don't know if it was me. I don't know if it's somebody down the road. I don't know if it's you. Some Somewhere, God had a plan for that situation. Glory be to God. Say it with me. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Now, I'm going back to 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 10. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your calling and election sure or certain. For if you do so, you will never stumble. Verse 11, an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I'm going to tell you right now. 
thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And when we get here like this, watch this. All of a sudden, we start speaking the word one time and it comes to pass. Why? Because yeah. we finally got all of us out of the way so that the Father can manifest in our lives. Amen. Say it with me. Help me get out of the way. In Jesus' mighty name. I told you it was my last verse, and I meant it. I'm done. Well, not really, but I'm stopping. <laughs> Sure love you guys. I sure love having this team of people together, this body. It's, it's not a team. It's a body. We're the body of Christ. We are the living body of Christ. Wow. It's amazing. It is amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. Let's pray. Father, right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Right now. In the name of Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. For who you are. Inside of us. We are struck. With awe. And wonder. Awe. And wonder. That you want to be and live inside of us. That you've made us the temple of the living God. Oh my, oh my, oh my. We thank you. In Jesus' mighty name. And we say it again. Flow through me. Live in me. And may I be the example of God's love and grace and mercy. In the mighty name of Jesus. In everything I do and everywhere I go. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Don't you just love the word of God? Mm -hmm. I love this. I love this word of God. And say it. I have the nature of my I father. Of my father. <laughs> wait. Wait. Tonight. Wilma said she was proud of her daughter, Shannon. We can see the nature of Wilma and Shannon. Hmm. But it is no different than the nature of our father can be seen in you. Hmm. Say it with me. And he loves everybody. He, loves everybody. he truly does. He truly does. He truly does. Are you ready? Let's receive the communion elements. I could just keep preaching, but that ain't going to do me no good. We're done. We're not done. We're just stopping. First Corinthians chapter 11. Thank you, Shannon, for the verse list. Here we go. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. Hold on. We got to have a drink of coffee. I believe that mocha latte is what flows through the river of life. I believe that coffee beans are on the tree of life. Well, they may very well be chocolate covered. Expressly. Back to 1 Corinthians eleven twenty three. <laughs> and I don't know where the fudge is, Mike, but hallelujah. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you. That the Lord Jesus, 
on the same night in which he was betrayed, took the bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and he said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance for me. In the same manner, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. 26, for as often as you eat this bread and as often as you drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's redemptive work, all of it, until he comes. Verse 28, let a man examine himself. And so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. Verse 31, for if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. Think about this. You and I are blessed with the responsibility of judging ourselves by the witness of the Holy Spirit in our lives every day. Isn't that something? Jesus gave us his life, gave his life, gave us his righteousness. Our sins are completely purged from our life, gone forever. He makes us a whole new being creation. And then all he says is, just make sure you examine yourself every day. And judge yourself. Before the Holy Spirit of God. Isn't this just beautiful? And he gave us all of this in a, in a glass of juice and a piece of bread. And he called it the new covenant. That's why we call it new covenant worship. In Jesus' mighty name. Now watch this. We're going to pray a prayer of salvation. If you've never been born again, now is the time. Prayer of rededication. If you've been away from the Lord, do this. Come on, do it. If you're a part of the body of Christ, you can receive the body of Christ anywhere it's being given. I've had it in Lutheran churches, Catholic churches, Episcopal churches, every kind of charismatic church you could imagine, Baptist or Nazarene and Methodist. I've had it everywhere. Why? I'm a member of the body of Christ. Therefore, anywhere the body of Christ is received, I can receive. We're going to pray that prayer. And you're going to be right with God. In Jesus' mighty name. You ready? Pray this with me. Father, in Jesus' name. Father, in Jesus' name. I know I need you in my life. I know I need you in my life. In every area. In every area. And according to your holy word. And according to your holy word. Jesus is the door. Jesus is the door. And I enter in. And I enter in. John chapter 1. John chapter 1. Says when I believe in you. Says when I believe in and you. And I receive you. And I receive you. You give me the power. You give me the power. To become a child of God. To become a child of God. And I believe in you. And I believe in you. And I receive you. And I receive you. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Right here, right now. Right here and right now. Into every part of my life. Into every part of my life. I am now transformed. I am now transformed. <laughs> say, take all your sins in a big pile and just put them there and say, there's all my sin. There's all my sin. Now turn your hands over and just receive it. I receive all of your righteousness. And I receive all of your righteousness. Filling my life. Filling my life. Oh, Jesus, we love you, friend. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. So I live in power. So I live in power. Understand the word of God. Understand the word of God. Pray in my heavenly prayer language. Pray in my heavenly prayer language. Live a successful life. Live a successful life. As a believer every day. As a believer every day. I pray this in Jesus' mighty name. I pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. In that one prayer, you went from darkness to light, just like that. You went from fear to faith, just like that. 
You went from your sin to Jesus' righteousness in one prayer. Your sin, you can't beat. You don't have, there's no human force within us that can beat sin. You got to have Jesus. And Jesus made you his righteousness. <laughs> then it says, he adopted you into the family. You're now heir of God, joint heir with Jesus. You have an inheritance that's incorruptible that is that cannot fade away. You are of the seed and nature of Almighty God. You are his son or daughter. Woo! Mm -hmm. Make you shout and jump mm -hmm. and dance about. It really will. In Jesus' mighty name. All of that in one prayer. You'll notice they put my email address and website in there so that you have the access to be able to find us on the web somewhere. All right? Shoot me an email. Ask me a question. Tell me your story. And do something. We want to help you walk with God. I got 10 verses I want to send you. Whether you're an old believer or a new believer, there are 10 good verses to get established down inside of your life. This is how I work. You send me an email, I send you one. You don't send me an email, I don't send you one. I don't like spam and I don't do it. And I don't give my email addresses out to nobody. Matter of fact, I was trying to download one of these church website things or one of these website deals that all of us could be on together. They wanted to have access to everybody's email address. Like, what's wrong with you people? Not happening. Not happening here. Anyways, we want to be a blessing to you in any way we can. You can find all of this information, even this communion prayer, right there on the website. And we want to be a blessing to you in Jesus' mighty name. We have Facebook and YouTube. Every message we preach is always up there where you can get to it. And if they, if they shut us off or whatever, then it might be interrupted. But everything we have is still online from the very beginning. And it's there on purpose to help, to help you. Many of the YouTube videos have a timestamp in them. That when you open up the notes of the video, if there's a blue number in there that is a digit number with a colon, click it because that'll take you right exactly where the message starts. Now, not all of them. And if, you, if you're studying one that isn't, then I encourage you to copy the link, put it in an email, and say, Pastor, this one starts here and give me the timestamp. And when I get that from you, I'll put it right in there. I mean, we had... I don't know, we had eight months of, we had six months of video before we found out about the timestamp. Yeah. So it's taken a while to go back and get them all done, but it's all right. We welcome you to be a part of it in Jesus' mighty name. You ready? Let's bless our elements. We'll receive them together. Pray this with me. Father, in Jesus' name. Father, in Jesus' name. I bless these elements. I bless these elements. For this time of communion with you. For this time of communion with you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Jesus, you were wounded. Jesus, you were wounded. For my transgression. For my transgression. You were bruised. You were bruised. For my iniquity. For my iniquity. The chastisement. The chastisement. For my peace. For my peace. Is upon you, Lord. Is upon you, Lord. By your stripes. And by your stripes. I am healed. I am healed. In my spirit, in my soul, and in my body. In my spirit, in my soul, and in my body. In my mind, my will, and my emotion. In my mind, my will, and my emotion. Nothing missing, nothing broken. Nothing missing, nothing broken. Every joint supplying. Every joint supplying. From my body. From my body. In your body, Jesus. In your body, Jesus. In the body of Christ in my community. In the body of Christ in my community. And right here in this community of faith. And right here in this community of faith. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Let's receive the body of Christ together. Thank you, Jesus. But the book of Hebrews says, for the joy that was set before us. For the joy that was set before you.
you endured the cross. We thank you for it. Now we lift up the cup of blessing, the blood of Jesus. Pray this with me. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. I have been redeemed. I have been redeemed. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. I have reconciliation. I have reconciliation. With you, my Father. With you, my Father. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. Every sin. Every sin. Has been placed in remission. Has been placed in remission. In my life. In my life. I am a new creation. I am a new creation. Old things have passed away. Old things have all passed things away. have become new. And all things have become new. And I thank you for it. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. Every plague, every plague has to pass over. Has to pass and over. cannot be on me or my family. And cannot be on me or my family. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. I come boldly. I come boldly to the throne room of grace. To the throne room of where grace, I find grace, mercy, and help. Where I find grace, mercy, and help. For my assignment every day. For my assignment every day. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. I overcome. I overcome. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. The accuser of the brethren. The accuser of the brethren. Is cast down and crushed forever. Is cast down and crushed forever. And there's no more condemnation. And there's no mm. more condemnation. My conscience is purged. My conscience is purged. My robes are made white. My robes are made white. And I will always be. And I will always be. The glorious church. The glorious church. Without spot, wrinkle, or any other blemish. Without spot, wrinkle, or any other blemish. When you come for me. When you come for me. In Jesus' mighty in name. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. And amen. Let's receive. And the Bible says, they sang a hymn. And went out. And you and me like to sing the hymn, The Blood of Jesus. Because mm -hmm. we love to sing about the blood. Let me say this real quick. If tonight what we've taught was difficult for you to understand, you stick with us. Seriously. You might say, yeah, but Pastor, look at all you guys. You, you seem like you got it. Well, if these people have been around us now since last year, and this is their one-year birthday with us, they did this six days a week for a year. Of course, we're going to understand a few things. But if you stick with us, you'll understand it too. And mm -hmm. any question you have, you're always welcome to ask it. In Jesus, mighty name, you ready? Let's sing. The blood... That Jesus shed for me way back on Calvary, the blood that gives me strength from day to day, it will never lose its power. It reaches to the highest mountain and it flows to the lowest valley. The blood that gives me strength from day to day. It will never lose its power. It reaches to the highest mountain. And it flows to the lowest valley. The blood that gives me strength. From day to day, it will never lose its power. It will never lose. It will never lose. It will never lose its power. 
That was a good teaching moment. Isn't that awesome, yeah, night? Yeah. I mean, think about it, guys. We have become partakers of the very divine nature of God. Yeah. Just chew on that one for a while. That one right there, man, will just uh, chomp, 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 chomp. And the revelation of it will transform our lives forever. I just, I think about it. And I think about all of you. And I think about all of us together. God's building a body here oh that goodness. will transform this world. Yes, amen. If, if you're part of that um, uh, messenger thread for the tent meeting, I put those verses in there about root out, tear down, destroy, plant and build. We are going to change Christians into believers and we're going to transform cities which then change the nation. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Well, I'm all done. The only thing that we can do is stay here and be longer. We're not going to do that because I'm going to beat the 92nd lady tonight. <laughs> this is our closing prayer verse tonight. Jude 24 and 25 all the way from Louisiana and Sister Phyllis K. Raymond. <laughs> I saw her posted earlier. Whoops. Now on to him. Who is able to keep you from stumbling or falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to God, our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty and dominion and power and honor and glory and blessing. I can hear the Messiah being sung. Glory and honor and power and praise be unto him, be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb. He is able, to, he is not only able, he is keeping you from falling. He is. To God our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. And amen. And amen. And amen. And amen. What do you say? Except glory be to God. Amen. And this is what I say. Thanks for being with us. Make sure you click like or love or something so we can see your name and pray for you by name. Tomorrow's the day of praise. See you tomorrow at noon. And then tomorrow night's question and answer night. Get your questions in early so we can have a bunch of them. Serious, get them in early. Send me a text, email, message or something. And um, get them in early. If you don't like anybody else to see it was you, send it to me privately. Let's have a whole bunch of them. And don't be afraid to ask any question because yeah. if you have it, somebody else does. Amen. If you have a question, somebody else does. So don't ever hesitate to ask a question, even if you've been a believer for years. Mm -hmm. I won't call anybody stupid. Mm -hmm. Happy Palm Sunday weekend. Is it really? Is it really? Oh, my goodness. Wow. That's interesting. All right, here we go. You too, fellas. Thank you. Remember this. We love you, and God loves you, and Jesus is Lord. Keep watching for the um, We got a uh, advertisement up on the website about um, an, announcement. Yeah. an announcement about the birthday party. You can feel free to share it if you'd like. Feel free to make one of your own if you like. Um, and um, that's going to be Monday night 
and at 8 p.m. Eastern. And right now it's going to be on YouTube, Facebook, and Blog Talk Radio. We call you blessed in Jesus' mighty name. Do we already say the other one? We love you. Mm -hmm. Did we already say that? Mm -hmm. And God loves you. And Jesus, and Jesus is, is Lord and never hurts to repeat that. <laughs> love you guys. Yes, we do.